Okay, and we're back, and we're going to do some air friction right now. Um, air friction for many students in mechanics is one of the, the harder types of topics to study. Um, and I think the main reason for that isn't because it's not all over the place, which it is, but we're, we're used to ignoring it. Okay, so this idea that, that air friction is one of those physics land type concepts certainly holds true. But there, there's a more important reason why a lot of people find it more difficult. Uh, unlike things like kinetic and static friction forces, uh, which are constant and cause constant acceleration, um, air friction is a non-constant force. It depends on how fast you're going. So as soon as your velocity changes, then the force changes, the acceleration changes, and, and we're stuck using calculus. Okay, so... Um, what I want to do is, is try one of the easier type problems that you have with air friction, where air friction is the only force acting on an object. And this might be something like a hockey puck um, that you kick or give a whack with a hockey stick and it's sliding down the ice. So for, for us, we'll assume that it's a frictionless surface, um, no static or kinetic friction to worry about. Air friction is the only force. So like anything, if you want to analyze the motion, a, a good starting place, of course, is F equals MA. Okay, in this case, um, air friction is, is your force, so we'll put in the negative KV. It's, it's opposite your velocity. Okay, so that minus sign just means opposite direction compared to which way the motion is. And right away, we can see, you know, if you solve for acceleration, this k is a constant, um, mass is a constant, and there's velocity. So there, there we can see how your acceleration is non-constant. Your acceleration depends on velocity as well. But what we want is to answer the question, um, what's your velocity as a function of time? How do you get time into the mix? And uh, if, if we can do this, if, if we can actually solve for this function, whatever it turns out to be, um, that'll be useful because then you can literally find instantaneous values. Where is it at any, any given time? What's its acceleration and force at any time? And what's its position at any time? Okay, so the way we can get acceleration into the mix is we can make use of our, our basic definition of acceleration. It's the rate of change of velocity. So here's the calculus. Acceleration is, is in fact a derivative of velocity. So that's on the left hand side and we have um, some constants and velocity on the right hand side. Okay. So if, if you understand this part, the rest is just math. And th this is the physics right here. Okay. So there's, there's not a whole lot going on. It's just the one force. Um, but now we have to make use of math. If you want to solve for velocity, um, a good thing to always try with a differential equation is to try to separate the variables. And this one we can do very easily. Bring your velocities to the right hand side and then we can bring this little dt, this so-called time differential up on the right hand side. And once you separate those, now you can integrate. Okay. But what we do in physics is we, we are, want to make this as physical as possible. So we need limits on these integrals. And time is the easiest one. You, you kind of start your clock right when the hockey puck begins. And you let it run for however long you want, however many seconds you want. Now at time equals zero, uh, speed-wise, we have our initial velocity. And really what we're trying to figure out is after our time has passed, what's the final? Okay, that, that'll be the thing we're trying to solve for. Okay. So here goes. Um, the right hand side, because these are constants, all you have is the integral of dt, which is just time. So that's our time interval. That's all we end up with on the, the right hand side. Whereas on the left hand side, um, this is our definition, and this is what a lot of beginning calculus students kind of get stuck on. dv over v is an integral that is the definition of natural log of our velocity. And then we have to evaluate this between 
B uh, initial and B final. Okay. So it turns out our velocity is going to be exponential. Uh, we can go ahead and we can plug in our, our top values, natural log of B final minus natural log of B initial. We can rewrite that using algebra 2 as natural log of B final over B initial. And we have the same things on the right-hand side. Now if we go ahead and if we solve for the final, we have to E both sides. And now we have our final answer. The initial times this exponential function. Okay? That's it. Um, not so bad. As you get the hang of calculus and as, as this integral makes uh, more and more sense to you, this actually isn't so bad uh, once you do it a few times. Okay, so you get this exponential behavior, the non-constant force. Always draw the picture, draw the graph. Velocity is a function of time. It's going to start at whatever your V initial is. This is exponential decay. It approaches zero over time okay, at a non-constant rate. Pretty quickly at first, and then, then it basically um, comes, comes to a stop well down the line. Um, we're going to leave it right here for now, and we'll obviously we'll do some stuff in class, but um, I hope this makes sense. Um, it's just a nice little piece of, of calculus and algebra. Um, and now we, we can do a little bit of work with air friction. So until next time, we'll see you later.